Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay. It's so nice to see you guys again uh, for those of you who are returning and for those of you who are brand new, it's so nice to see you for the first time. I hope you stick around and that you enjoy this content and if you do, please don't forget to like and subscribe and if you think that this is helpful, you can share it with a friend. Um, so today we're going to be talking about Cain and his offering. Um, but that's going to come in a little bit. First of all, I would like to share with you just a, a little bit about what happened with last week's video. So some of you got to watch that video and some of you didn't because I took it down within about 24 hours. Um, and I'd just like to share with you a little bit about why that happened. So a bit of backstory. I am currently in hotel quarantine in Brisbane. So actually today is my last day. I get to get out tomorrow morning. I'm so excited. It's been two long weeks. Um, but yeah, so I'm here now. And when I was making that video last week, I'd been here for about a week by that point. And when you're in hotel quarantine, you have lots and lots and lots of time on your hands. And because of that, I was trying to kill some time and I was not looking after my spiritual health as well as I could have been at the time. Um, and something I realized about four years ago when I was doing some volunteer mission missionary work is that when you are doing any kind of ministry, whether it's missionary work or anything else, um, Satan's already trying to attack you hard enough as it is without you know, allowing him further access into your life. And for me, that comes in the form of what type of media I'm consuming. And at the time it was a lot of worldly media. Um, and in that situation, I was consuming a lot of worldly media while I was trying to do missionary work and it just wasn't going well together. I was not in a good headspace. I was not emotionally, you know, in a good space um, and I was not making good decisions um, with the way that I interacted with people around me. I was just not um, interacting with God very well. I wasn't keeping up with devotionals and yeah, because of the influence that Satan had over me through that worldly media, I was not in a good place spiritually and that was coming out in my life in a variety of ways. And so I learned that lesson as it turns out, not very well, <laughs> because I, I, I've slipped into this pattern a few times. Um, and so in the week, my first week here, I um, had all this time to kill. And so I just did some fairly innocent things. Um, I watched a movie, which wasn't exactly the style that I would, you know, tend to watch these days, which is very minimal. Like I watched the Chosen series and I watch sermons. I don't really watch much else because it's, it's all a bit corrupt. Um, and so occasionally I'll watch a movie and those occasions don't ever turn out good. Um, but it wasn't just a movie. I also got an innocent game on my phone. It was like a little farming game. Um, but it wasn't that innocent because it kept stealing my time and my thoughts and my emotional energy. And I was basically just, you know, spending my first week here in quarantine, just playing on my phone. And and by the time it, it got time to spend time with God in the evenings, that's like to begin with, um, I wasn't really interested and I really didn't spend as much time with God and already being in a transitional place, my routine is out of whack. Um, and so I'm already struggling to get into devotionals. And now that I've got this game that's sucking all my time and energy, then I don't even feel like having devotional time even more than usual. And so it was like a really bad combination of things that I wasn't taking a lot of initiative in, a lot of a careful, intentional planning around. And so, yeah, I was just kind of allowing myself to be distracted a whole bunch. And so by the time it came to Friday to make that video last week, um, I had a whole bunch of things, you know, that weren't going well. And um, to top it off, I woke up with a really bad back and being in quarantine, I wasn't allowed to see a chiropractor I still haven't seen one and I was actually quite distressed and so I just had like a, a bad day, a bad way to start it. Um, and I can see in hindsight that Satan was attacking me from every side so that it would, you know, impact badly on on what I produced for YouTube, um, which is my ministry here at the moment. Um, and so that day I didn't put a lot of effort or energy or thought into what I would be telling you guys here. 
Um, I hadn't really gotten anything from God yet about what story I was going to tell from the Bible, how I was going to try to make it relevant or anything. And so I kind of just whipped something up very last minute. And then the technology that I was using wasn't working for me and I was frustrated with it. I was just trying to be distracted while I was waiting long periods of time for editing to take place and going on my phone and just playing that game in the intervals. And like, I, yeah, I wasn't putting any time or thought or energy into that particular video. And because of that, I just like wanted it to go out already onto the internet and get the views and be done with it. I wasn't really caring about any of you guys and your spiritual needs. Um, and I wasn't being very careful with my words and sort of how they came across. So even though I followed the traditional structure that I normally would with these videos, I tell a Bible story, I tell a bit of stories from my own life, and I hope that somehow that helps you guys <laughs> in this particular circumstance. Even though I did what I know typically works, I did it with a spirit that was not glorifying God. I did it um, in ways that, you know, just really came across um, poorly and it wasn't helpful. And even though it might have been a little bit entertaining some parts of the video, it wasn't overall wholesome and helpful. And, you know, the purpose of this channel is actually um, to disciple kingdom leaders. So people who are going to be able to go out and bring more people into God's kingdom. Um, I want to be able to share with you stuff from the Bible, stuff from my own life that you can take on board and learn from and grow in so that you are able to be more effective to go and bring the gospel to the world. That's, that's basically the purpose of this whole channel. And so the video that I put out last week wasn't doing that. It wasn't ticking those boxes, basically. And because of that, it doesn't belong here on my channel and so I had to take it down and I want to share this story with you because one of the things that God has been teaching me especially in the past four years is that um, I need to be humble and when you humble yourself um, you are able to see that you have done something wrong and you are able to apologize repent turn around the opposite direction and make it better and even though I considered taking down that video and tweaking it and putting it back up again, um, and that might retain some views, I ultimately decided that that wasn't going to, you know, help anything or make anything better. And so I took it down completely. And I thought I would share with you just a brief reason why this week. Um, and yeah, part of that discipling is I want you guys to, to see that humility um, process in action. Um, even though it sucked that I put up that video and that it, um, wasn't glorifying God and I had to take it down and that wasn't a comfortable feeling for me. It wasn't enjoyable. Um, and honestly, I could be, you know, feeling quite bad about that, um, in, in the sense of like even a little bit humiliated that I would do that or, um, like guilty or I don't know the exact word that I'm looking for right now, but I'm choosing to say that, Hey, that was a situation that happened, but God has grace. Um, and I'm going to take full advantage of that and say, Hey guys, this is what happened and we can move on. And I'd like for you guys to see that taking place in my life and be able to apply that to your own life. Like what have you guys done recently that wasn't really exactly hitting the mark and can you be humble enough to actually go back and, you know, apologize or try to make things better um, in some, you know, humble and graceful kind of way. Now, this ties into the story um, that we're going to be looking at in the Bible. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you the link after I've gone into the text for a bit. So we are looking at Cain, as in Cain and Abel. Um, and the offering that he gave to God. So let me have a quick drink of water because I've done a lot of talking very quickly. So Cain was Adam and Eve's firstborn child. Um, and then he had this younger brother called Abel. So that's just the quick little overview of who he is. Beyond that though, if you look at Genesis chapter 3 and the, the very beginning of Genesis chapter 4, 
Um, Genesis chapter 3 is where Adam and Eve sin and then God pronounces a bit of a curse over them um, and the serpent and then he also produces the first ever messianic prophecy saying hey there's going to be a savior who's going to come and he's going to make everything better basically. So when Eve gets pregnant the first time with Cain, her firstborn, she says, um, I have acquired a man from the Lord when she gives birth, birth to him. So in this statement, a lot of theologians um, and Bible commentaries believe that she may have thought that, you know, this firstborn son was actually going to be the Jesus figure, um, was going to be that savior who she produces like her offspring who comes to make things right and so she's got really really high hopes for this kid and then she has another kid and then in the process of time which as we discussed a few weeks ago um means in bible language many years later so they've grown up for a while now these these boys aren't kids anymore um many years later in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. So we're in verse, uh, we're in chapter four, Genesis chapter four and verse three from this point now. So Cain brings an offering to the Lord um, and Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering and Cain was very angry and his, his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Okay, so we're going to look at the first part right now. So why didn't God accept the offering from Cain? But why did he accept Abel's offering? As a kid, you know, growing up as a Christian, I've heard the story since I was like a baby, basically. It's, you know, one of the very basic stories in the Bible, Cain and Abel, Cain kills Abel. Oh no, whoops. Um, not a whoops, very big whoops. Um, but like when I was a kid, I was like, offerings and sacrifices, aren't they supposed to be lambs? Maybe was um, Cain's offering not accepted because it wasn't a lamb is that what's going on here but if you actually have a closer look at the text which i've done a little bit more recently um you can see here i'll read it out again and see if you can pick it up um cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground and abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat so what's going on here is cain just brought any old offering of any old fruit and veggies and Abel brought of the firstborn and of the fat. So we know from other parts of the Bible much later on that God expects, um, especially the Israelites, to bring the firstborn. He, he takes the firstborn of any animal or human as his own. And then the Israelites actually have to pay money um, or like give a sacrifice or whatever to redeem that firstborn. If it's like a horse or if it's a child or whatever, Whoever opens the womb, whoever is the firstborn, belongs to God. And there's a whole bigger, deeper theological meaning to all of that, um, which I am not qualified to actually discuss with you guys at this point, but it's about Jesus, basically, and it's amazing, it's wonderful, and you should definitely go and check out Ty Gibson's book, um, The Sonship of Christ. It talks a lot about the firstborn stuff. All right, so anyway, complete little tangent aside, um, Abel brings the firstborn and of their fat, um, <clears throat> and uh, Cain is bringing just any old fruit and veggies. And that is actually the reason, not because it's sheep that, uh, that Abel is bringing versus fruit and veggies. It's got nothing to do with what was offered so much as well, it does with what, um, just like the, the importance that God places on particular parts of the offering and the intention behind the offering. So I see an offering as something that we give to God as a gift. So there are sacrifices and then there are offerings. Um, a sacrifice is something that is required um, to 
point us towards the future um, death and resurrection of, of Jesus and like the atonement for sin, basically. That's what a sacrifice is meant to represent. But an offering is a bit different. It might, you know, in the, the uh, Old Testament times involve the, the killing of an animal, but that's not so much um, a sacrifice as it is saying, hey, above and beyond, um, you know, looking forward to that time when Jesus is going to die for us, we want to give this offering, this gift, this this extra, you know, abundance of our love and and show you in this particular way that we love you, God. That's what an offering is about. And we see this in some other ways as well with vows, like the Nazarite vow, um, where a person would vow that they were never going to drink wine or eat grapes and they weren't ever going to cut their hair. Um, that was a vow. And there were other types of vows that people could make. Um, and these are all voluntary. These are not mandated. Nobody's ever forcing any particular person to do these things. It comes from that person's individual decision. Hey, I want to do this thing for God. Um, but the thing is that God says in those instances, if you're going to make a vow, if you're going to like do something like that, make a commitment, you actually need to commit. Like you can't just be half-hearted. Like you actually need to follow through on that thing and, and do it to the fullest. And yeah, basically if you're going to say you're going to do something, you need to do it. Um, and it's the same thing with offerings. If you're going to give God an offering, it needs to be to the best of your ability. Like you're wanting to do this out of a position of, of love in your heart for God. Um, so why would you bring him kind of just the leftovers or just a little bit of the um, not as good crops? Like, why would you hold the best crops for yourself if you want to show God love and God other scented love? Um, yeah, so an, an offering needs to be from the best of what we have, not just the excess, not just, you know, whatever we have lying around at the time. It needs to be something intentional and showing God we actually love him. And so when Cain brings his offering, it's not the most intentional kind of thing. It's kind of like me this past week where um, I made that video, even though, you know, God's given me this ministry, I need to give you guys a video each week, every Friday or, you know, whatever. Um, and like that is, that's part of the ministry that God's given me to do, but I haven't done that to my fullest. I want to do this out of love for him as much as I want to do it out of like the fact that he's called me to do it. Um, I want to be doing things to the best of my ability for him, but that last one was not my best work ever. <laughs> and so it's not acceptable. And I could see that pretty clearly that um, that wasn't a, an acceptable offering to God and I need to take it back and give him a better one <laughs> um, and actually put more intention into it. And this particular video, this is like my 50th take. And so <laughs> not that it's like any kind of punishment or anything, but I am definitely pushing through on this one and actually trying to get this one out today <laughs> um, and putting like a, a bit more effort and intentionality into it. It's just a funny coincidence. I don't think this is, you know, um, any sort of retribution from on high that I have to take a bunch of takes to, to get this video to work for me. <laughs> Um, yeah, but it's just, you know, putting the effort in, putting that intention, um, into whatever offering you give God, it actually needs to come from your heart. It needs to be, you know, kind of a masterpiece in a sense of whatever you're, you're good at doing. Like you actually put your effort and your love into it. And so, um, when Cain and his offering, uh, when, when God didn't respect that offering, whether that means he didn't, you know, burn it up with fire from heaven or whatever it was, um, Cain was very angry and his countenance fell, which basically means he was so angry that his face was contorted and he was visibly angry. And God saw this. And if we think about it at the, this point, Cain hasn't actively done anything that we could actually call sin at this point. He has given a gift to God that was a bit subpar. This sunshine is a lot. Hold on, is it gonna work? It's 
still very bright. Hold on. That's better for a minute. Oh, it was better. <laughs> okay, guys, you can look at the sun for a while. How about that? Um, <laughs> sorry. So, God didn't ex uh, accept the offering and Cain got quite upset about that. But at this point, he's just become angry. Anger is an emotion. Anger is not a sin. I used to teach these uh, this this thing to some kids at the school that I used to work at when they would get very angry. It wasn't sinning, but you need to be very careful about what you do with that anger because if you begin to hurt other people or yourself or whatever, then that is sin. But if you were just feeling the emotion, that's that's okay. You're allowed to feel angry, but you need to be very careful with what happens next with that anger. And that's exactly what God's telling Cain here. He's saying, well, he's not saying that exactly. He's saying some things around that. He says, why are you angry? So he asks a question. God usually starts conversations with a question, if you look through the Bible. And why has your countenance fallen? Why, why has your face fallen? Why are you looking so glum and upset? <laughs> if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you but you should rule over it. So he's, he's asking, why are you angry? Why are you upset? Like, do you, do you really think you have the right to be upset right here? Like, I get that you're angry and I didn't accept your offering, but hold on a second. You didn't actually give me a good offering. Can you see that? He's saying, if you do well, will you not be accepted? So obviously, if you haven't been accepted, you didn't do well. But if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you. So now that you haven't been accepted, you haven't done well, sin is hiding there, laying low, waiting for an opportunity to rise up. Its desire is for you. It wants to get you. Sin wants to take you out. And if you allow it, then it will have that opportunity. But, and it's saying here, but you should rule over it. So what God is telling Cain here is that, you know, you come up against this, this problem where you expected things to go one way, um, but they didn't go that way. And now you're in an, like, an emotional state where it's okay to be angry. You're allowed to feel emotions. He's not saying that. I'm saying that. <laughs> um, but you need to be very careful with what happens with that anger because there is this thing called sin and it wants to take control of you. But you know what? You need to master it. You need to tell it who's boss. You need to have self-control. You need to basically say, hey, look, I know I'm angry and I could do something really harmful right now out of like an angry outburst, but it's my responsibility here um, to take control of, of that sin tendency, that thing that I want to do, that, that thing that sin is enticing me to do. I don't have to do that. I am not a slave to sin. And this is like, I guess, the first place that God is showing us that as humans, we are not slaves to sin. We don't actually have to sin. We have the opportunity to take control of that tendency to sin. And I love it here that, that God is showing that there is a way out. Even though we see in the next verse that Cain does not take that way out, um, God is, is always trying to get us into a, a relationship with him and, and bring us back and bring us closer to him. He's given Cain a warning and he's given Cain some uh, wisdom, some instruction on how not to um, get into a worse off position than he already is. He hasn't sinned yet. He's just, you know, given a half-hearted gift, which I guess, I mean, if you're coming from a, a different perspective, you might call that sin. I think that's I, I don't think that is sin, personally. I think that is um, just a, an un, like a, a gift that was not very intentional, um, wasn't very well thought through, and then 
an understandable emotional reaction to the situation. But what happens next um, is what is Kane basically taking that anger and taking it out on his brother and, you know, going, God likes my brother better and I'm going to kill him for it, basically. I don't know what his thoughts exactly were. But he doesn't take God's advice. Um, he doesn't take control of his own emotions and his own sin tendency. And he goes out and kills his brother. Um, but yeah, God does show that there is a way out. We don't actually have to sin. And so I want you guys to take from this is that I know there are so many things that are sinful in this world that we are drawn towards and that we often um, like fall into, fall into sin, but we don't have to. There is a way out. God has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And one of the, the fruits of that is self-control. Um, so take authority in the Holy Spirit and say, I have self-control and I don't have to fall into the sin that, you know, I am desiring to, to be involved in right now. And so for me, an example would be, this past week, I, I recognized that playing this game on my phone for endless hours was not helping me. And I have, you know, such a tendency towards distraction that I had to take control of the situation and delete that app and delete the Instagram app for a while. And, you know, a few other things that I know I was spending a lot of time, you know, taking me away from my relationship with God. And so that was my remedy to the situation was repentance and taken an action to um, remove that um, temptation um, from my life so I am less able to fall into that sin. Um, yeah, so that was an exercise in self-control. So those are a few things that I, I've i noticed from this story and how it relates to this past week. Um, and I really hope that you guys are encouraged and that you can go out from watching this video knowing that you actually do have the ability to have self-control. God has given you that gift um, and he really wants you to use it so that you don't end up in a place like Cain did where he goes and kills his brother and he loses his family and he's got a mark put on him for the rest of his life. He gets a full on curse over his life. Not that God's going to do that to you, but you know, you need to just be very careful that you do not go down a very quick and slippery slope into a position like Cain found himself in. So that is all from me today. The sun has been wanting to say hello this whole time. I could have found a better spot, but anyway, that's unnecessary to discuss. Um, I will see you guys again next Friday. Um, yeah, love you guys. Bye.